to Michael and welcome to Science Night Breakwater Good day. Before we start, let's have a quick game first. Let's have Jumble Rumble. I will show you Jumble Letters. What you're going to do is to identify the word based on the Jumble Letters. Let's start. What do you think is our first word? You have 5 seconds. get the f our first word our first word is weather let's have our next one what do you think our second word you have five seconds our second word is climbing did you get it let's have the third word. You have five seconds. Our third word is latitude. Let's have the next one. You have five seconds. Did you guess our fourth word? Our fourth word is elevation. Let's have our last word. You have five seconds to guess it. Did you guess our word? That is water. Before us. We start our discussion. Let us watch this video. We hear it so much that it feels like a buzzword, but it is far from it. Climate change is a real and serious issue. But isn't the climate always changing? What exactly is climate change? Why should we care? Well, the Earth's climate has changed throughout history. Most of these slight changes are caused by small variations in the Earth's orbit. But climate change as we know it today is characterized by an abrupt increase in the Earth's temperature. It is estimated to have gotten 1.2 to 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit warmer in just the last century. 10 out of the last 13 years were the warmest on record. 97% of climate scientists agree that this new tendency is not caused by the variations of the Earth's orbit, but rather very likely caused by human activities. That means you and me. And since the Industrial Revolution, we have come a long way. Humans built airplanes, faster cars, developed remarkable technology, and learned how the natural resources around us can be used for our benefit. Although this has led to many wonderful inventions and advancements, like the device you're using to watch this video, or the ability to take a plane halfway around the world, it also means we've increased our consumption of natural resources, and in turn, released a lot of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Now, greenhouse gases occur naturally, but in excess can be dangerous to our planet. Modern human activities have increased the release of non-naturally occurring greenhouse gases because we have stepped up our demand for burning fossil fuels. The composition of greenhouse gases traps heat radiated from the sun. The more heat they trap, the warmer our planet gets. And as our planet gets warmer, we begin to feel the effects. One of climate change's biggest victims is our oceans. Oceans regulate the Earth's temperature and provide 50% of the Earth's oxygen. Now, climate change has increased the global temperature of the oceans by more than 0.3 degrees Fahrenheit since 1969. Although a warmer ocean might seem inviting to a beachgoer, it actually has devastating consequences for supporting life at sea. One of those consequences is ocean acidification, a direct effect of increased dissolved CO2. Since the late 18th century, ocean surface acidification has increased by 30%. A higher acid content means calcifying species, like oysters and clams and shallow water corals, are at risk, putting the entire ocean food web at risk. This is bad news for the one billion people relying on the ocean as its primary source of protein. Climate change has also caused the sea level to rise. Just in the last century, sea levels have risen 6.7 inches, but the rate in the last decade has nearly doubled. 
Sea levels have risen because as the ocean gets warmer, it swells. On top of that, glaciers and ice sheets are melting. Antarctica lost 36 cubic miles of ice between 2002 and 2005, and since 1994, each year on average, the Earth has lost 400 billion tons from its glaciers. That's like an ice cube, seven and a half kilometers on a side, four miles on a side, melting and flowing into the sea. When all that ice melts, it fills up our oceans, and just like filling up a bathtub, the shores can't hold all that water, and coastal regions get flooded. Troubling signs of climate change are increased extreme weather events. Natural disasters like floods, tornadoes, and deadly heat waves are more obvious to humans because of their immediate impact and their sharing of the images in the media. Climate change as we know it today is change in our Earth's overall temperature with massive and permanent ramifications. Although its consequences can be planet-threatening, scientists still believe there are things we can do on a personal level to help. Recycle and reuse things. Walk or use public transportation to get to work. Turn off your electronics when you're not using them. Eat less meat. While you're at it, eat more locally grown vegetables and foods. And last but not least, spread your knowledge and concerns about climate change with others. When it comes to climate change, the main takeaway is that it's real. And although we are part of the cause, we can also be part of the solution. Climate change refers to significant long-term changes in global climate. According to scientists, the major cause of climate change is global warming, and global warming is due to human activities. And this results to climate change that results to consequences. So these are the effects of climate change. Number one, weather system become more erratic, meaning to say, the typhoons, hurricanes are become stronger. There is a possibility that the average temperature will increase by 3 degrees Celsius. In terms of food security, food and water security, it becomes threatened. Extreme weather increases the changes of famine. Nature also suffers. Climate change is contributing to what scientists say is a man's made mass extinction. Social hardship, poverty, tropical disease spread, and conflict will all worsen. We are the cause of climate change, but also we can be we can serve as also the solution. Together if we use to help each other and to contribute simple things like recycling, walking instead of um, using of cars and vehicles, um, plugging out your gadgets, saving water, eating um, homegrown or locally grown vegetables, and avoiding meat are the things that we can do to lessen the effect of climate change. Since we are talking about climate change, let us first describe or define first climate. What is climate? And how is climate differ from weather? Weather is a temporary condition of the atmosphere, meaning to say temporary, pwedeng magbabago in a certain short span of time. Or, weather is the atmospheric condition for a short period of time. So we are talking about the condition of the atmosphere for a short period of time. On the other hand, climate is the condition prevailing in an area in general or over a long period of time. So again, weather is the condition of the atmosphere for a short period of time. On the other hand, climate is the condition of the atmosphere in general or for a long period of time. 
by knowing those statement or definition of weather and climate, let us identify if the pictures or statement given is referring to weather or climate. What do you think does the picture show? This picture show what? Or this picture shows what? Is it referring to weather or climbing? That's great. That is weather. So this picture shows the weather condition of that day. So partly cloudy, it, um, it is the condition of the weather of the atmosphere on that day which is Monday so these are the predictions of weather for the following days we have Tuesday still partly cloudy Wednesday partly cloudy Thursday partly cloudy and Friday can be rainy so a day-to-day -day condition of the atmosphere is what we call the weather let's have the next one the statement is referring to, our statement is, can change within a few minutes or hours. Is it referring to climbing or weather? Nice, that is weather. So weather can change from a few minutes to hours. So, maaring maaraw ngayon o mayong oras at kinahapunan so that is weather what does the picture show this is our third picture what do you think does the picture show is it referring to weather or climbing okay our the answer is climbing so this picture shows the climbing or this is this this picture shows the spring winter summer and autumn these are seasons so seasons experiences by those area in a particular months so there is a longer period of time because we are referring to months spring um, experiences by area for uh, for about three months after three months it could be winter after three months another um, season of summer and after three months another season which is autumn so since we are referring to longer period and we are now in months we are talking about months so these seasons or four seasons is an example of climate how about this picture what does the picture show is it referring to climbing or weather great that is climate philippines experiences this kind of season we have dry and wet season so for a particular number of months we are experiencing dry seasons and another for particular sets of months we are experiencing wet season so in dry season there is a warmer um, temperature so yan yung tinatawag natin summer in wet season there are lots of rains happening or we are experiencing lots of rains and, and typhoons so since it happens for a long period of time for a set, certain sets of months so these two seasons that we are experiencing which is dry and wet seasons are examples of climate the statement is referring to our statement is takes very long time to change is it referring to climate or weather very good that is climate so climbing is in a weather condition for a long period of time. Before it changes, it takes long time or long amount of time to change. So that is climbing. 
These are examples of weather. We have sunny, cloudy, partly cloudy, rainy, snowy, sleeting, stormy, lightning, thunder, hailing, windy, and foggy. Those are, those, are, those are examples of weather that could experience or observe every day or in each day. So meaning to say, it could, it could change from day to day or the condition of the atmosphere or the weather could change from time to time. Weather also describes the temperature and humidity of that day. So every day, um, it could change the weather condition or the condition of the atmosphere can change the temperature and the, it's also the humidity. So that is what we call the weather. How about climate? Climate is experiencing or we, we experience climate for a longer period of time. We have what we call cli different climatic zones. So our, um, the earth has um, four or three kinds of climatic zones. We have tropical zones, those are the green area or country or regions in in globe and we have the temperate zone those are the yellow one those area which is in yellow and we have the last climatic zone which is the polar zone those are the pink one now what kind of climate does the tropical zone experience right um, philippines is located in this zone we are located in tropical zone so most probably we are in what we call tropical climate how do we describe tropical climate most mostly tropical climate experiences dry and wet seasons okay how about the temperate zone those temperate zones experiences what we call four seasons we have spring winter summer and autumn so those temperate zone experiences this kind of climate or this kind of seasons how about the polar zone Oops, probably since here in polar zone in poles the experiences colder climate around the whole year okay so that is weather and climate we all know that climate change and we observe this um, the result or effect of this climate change climate change is due to human activities but the question is does climate of an area change naturally without the intervention of human activities or like does climate change in natural way answer is yes there are different factors that affect the climate of an area so meaning to say there are natural factors affecting the changes of climbing of a certain area so let us discuss it one by one what are the factors affecting the climate of an area let's start with latitude latitude the closer the place is to the equator the warmer the climate is the farther the place is from the equator the colder the climate is equator is an example of latitude if the place is located near the equator that place experiences warmer climate on the other hand if the place is located far away or farther from the equator meaning malayo it experiences colder climate the question is why 
I want you to observe this picture. This is the sun's rays, and this is our Earth, and this is the equator, which is an example of latitude. If we ob observe, the equator receives most of the sun's heat. Why? Because they are directly heated by the sun. So meaning to say, those area located near the equator receives most of the sun's heat. Therefore, they experience more warmer climate. On the other hand, those area at the poles experiences lesser, lesser amount of heat. Therefore, they experience colder climate. As the sun's rays or as the angle of the sun's rays increases, the temperature also increases. As the angle of the sun's rays decreases, the temperature also decreases. The sun's rays or the angle of the sun's rays in equator is larger, meaning to say it has greater um, angle of sun's rays. Therefore, the amount of uh, heat or temperature received by that area near the equator is greater for that reason they have warmer temperature since the pole or the area near the poles has lesser angle of sun's rays they receive lesser amount of heat therefore they uh, experience colder climate so if the area is near the equator, they have warmer climate because they receive most of the sun's heat. If the area is growing farther away from the equator, they receive lesser amount of heat because the angle of sun's rays becomes lesser also. That's why they receive colder climate. Philippines is located near the equator. For that reason, we are experiencing warmer climate. On the other hand, if we notice here, Iceland, from the word ice, meaning to say this country experiences icy um, <clears throat> temperature or colder temperature. The question is why? Why do, does Iceland experience colder temperature? Great, because Iceland is farther away from the equator. They receive lesser, lesser amount of heat because the angle of sun's rays is lesser. They receive lesser amount of heat. For that reason, they experience colder climate. And some areas on the poles and here in the, this pole. So our first factor that affects the climate of an area is what we call latitude. Second is what we call elevation or altitude. The air temperature decreases as the altitude increases. For every 1,000 meter, there is a drop of 6.5 degrees Celsius. At higher elevation, there is less air. The air molecules are farther apart, thus making the air less dense. Lighter air cannot absorb much heat, making the air temperature lower. Ultimately, the decrease in air temperature is due to decrease in air pressure. As the altitude increases, the temperature decreases. Colder temperature leads to colder climate. So, once we are talking about elevation, we are talking about the altitude o yung taas ng isang lugar. Kapag mas mataas ang isang lugar, above sea level, mas mababa ang kanyang temperature. Dahil sa every 1,000 meter ng pagtaas ng isang lugar, mula, mula sa sea level, 
merong pagbagsak ng temperatura ng 6.5 degree Celsius. Sa matataas na lugar, mas mab, mas konti ang air. Kapag mab, makonti ang air molecules, sila ay mas hiwa hiwalay, making that air less dense. Kapag ang air ay less dense, they cannot absorb much heat. Therefore, that area experiences colder climate kasi walang masyadong init. Let us take a look in this table. These are the places in the Philippines, their elevation o yung taas ng lugar, yung taas ng lugar na yun above sea level and their annual average temperature. For Bacolod, the elevation is 10 meters above sea level. It experiences 27.5 annual temperature degrees Celsius. Baguio, 1,400 above sea level. It experiences an annual temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. We have Lawag, 20 meters above sea level. It experiences an annual average temperature of 27.3 degrees Celsius. And so on and so forth. Now, the question is, which area has the lowest temperature? Which place in the Philippines, based on this table, experiences lower temperature? Very good. That is Baguio. Baguio is um, 1,400 meters above sea level. So, ganun siya taas. And its average, annual average temperature is 16 degrees Celsius. Because there is a lesser air above uh, on that area, it experiences less dense air, less dense air cannot absorb too much heat for that reason, it experiences lower temperature. Lower temperature will yield to colder climate. Okay? So, let's have... How about Manila? Both Manila and Bacolod has an elevation of 10 meters above sea level. Their temperature is 27.7 degrees or 27 degrees Celsius. You need to say they have warmer temperature or higher temperature than Baguio because they, they are in lower elevation. Okay? Therefore, their experiences higher temperature, mas mainit. Okay? So, kapag mas mainit ang temperatura, mas ma mas mainit ang isang lugar. So, pag mas mataas ang isang lugar, mas mababa ang temperature, mas malibig. Kapag mas mababa naman ang isang lugar, mas mataas ang temperature, mas mainit. Okay, so Baguio is located the, at the Philippines and it's located 1,400 meters above the sea level. For that reason, experiences colder climate because it has less dense air. Less dense air cannot absorb too much heat. Therefore, the, that area experiences colder climate. And also, in Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa, Africa is somehow in tropical climate. So, Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa is located 5,985 meters above sea level. So, ganun siya kataas. For that reason, if you notice, there's, a, there's an ice. Ice um, particles above that uh, mountain. Because since it is higher, it has higher lat altitude or elevation. It, the, the top or the summit of that mountain experiences colder climate because of its elevation, high elevation. Therefore, since it experiences colder climate, there's a tendency it forms ices.
Again, our second factor is to affect the climate is what we call elevation or altitude. The third factor that affects the climate of a certain area is what we call proximity to bodies of water. Large bodies of water have a moderating effect on the temperatures of coastal areas, producing low ranges in temperature both between day and night and seasonally. The presence of bodies of water affects the climate of that area. So if an area is located near the bodies of water like sea, so those are the coastal area, that water affects the climate of that area. So how? How does it affect? In a coastal area like this, during daytime, the land um, heats faster than the water. So since it is fast, it is warmer. It, since the land is warmer or than the sea because it heats faster than the bodies of water, the tendency the air above the land becomes also warm. Okay, warm air always goes up. So the tendency to fill up the loss of air here above the, the land, the colder air which is above the sea because sea or bodies of water is much colder than the land during the day. So the tendency the air above the water becomes also cold. So since the warm air above the land goes up, to fill up the loose of air here, the cold air above the sea will now move to the land or will now flow to the land, over the land. Okay, so then afterwards it becomes warm again. So it will go up. So meaning to say, the air, the, the, the climate here experiences regulated climate because of the flow of cold and warm air. So there's a flow of warm and cold air to regulate the climate of that area. So, ibig sabihin, if an area is located at the bodies of water, near the bodies of water, it's regulated. It is not totally warm, it is not totally cold. Because of the presence of bodies of water, there is a flow of warm air and cold air. Then, the climate of that area is become regulated. So, during daytime, um, this land experiences sea breeze. So during daytime, that is what we call sea breeze. Kasi yung breeze o yung sea moy ng malamig na hangit ay nagagaling sa dagat. Kaya siya tinatawag ng sea breeze. During nighttime, the flow of the warm and cold air is inverted. During night time, if during daytime the land heats faster, during night time the land cool faster than the water. So the tendency is during night time the land is much colder than the sea. Therefore, the air above the land becomes cool. Since the sea during night time is warm, therefore the air above the sea is much warmer. The warm air will go up. So, to fill up the loose of air above the sea, the cold air from the land will now move from the land going to the sea. And it will, it will go up again to once it becomes warm. Then the cycle or the flow of air, of warm and cold air, 
feel now continue so that happens during the night time so meaning to say during night time the breeze or the cold breeze will will now from the land to the sea so during night time this coastal areas experiences what we call land breeze because the cold air or the cold breeze comes from the land going to the sea so the presence of bodies of waters affect the climate of an area because of the flow of warm and cold air and that area or the climate of that area becomes regulated because of the presence of bodies of water so that is our third factor areas near large bodies of water tend to have higher than average precipitation so meaning to say those coastal area experiences more precipitation than than those area na medyo malayo sa bodies of water making that coastal area because of much precipitation we have a um, regulated and colder climate let's now move to the fourth factor that affects the climate the fourth one is what we call the location relative to mountain ranges or what we call topography Windward sides of mountains tend to receive higher than average precipitation. Leeward sides tend to receive lower than average precipitation. The presence of mountain ranges affects the climate of an area. If that area is located on the windward side of that mountain or if that area is located on the leeward sides of the mountain. Because of the presence of the mountain, we have windward and leeward side. Windward side experiences cold climate or wet climate. On the other hand, the leeward side experiences dry climate or has warm temperature. Why? In windward side, the cold, the cooling moist air coming from this area, from the sea, will now move to the land so during daytime so it happens so the cold air will now move to the land but because of the presence of the mountain instead of that cold air will extend to that area but because of the presence of mountains it the cold air or the cold moist air will become or will black okay it's being black but by that mountain so the tendency instead of going on that area it with the moist air going from the sea will now move up once it moves up tendency is it will form clouds so once that clouds becomes heavy it will now precipitate or produce rains so that area receives more precipitation so therefore it has more vegetation and because of the precipitation and more vegetation that area has colder or wet climate on the other hand the other side of the mountain which is the leeward side since there is no presence of moist air going on that area because of from that area because of the presence of mountain it is it, it was blocked therefore the moist air cannot move on that area so the tendency is that area since there's no moist air the tendency is there's no um they experiences warmer climate or they experiences dry air dry air um results in warm climate 
So there's vegetation. Um, the if the land is dry. Okay. So the presence of mountain ranges or mountain affects the climate of an area. So if you're located here at the windward side, you experience a wet climate or the the temperature is much colder but if you're located near at the leeward side or you are located at the leeward side of the mountain much probably most probably you are experiencing dry climate okay so that's how the mountain ranges affects the climate of an area let's have the last factor that affects the climate we have ocean current ocean currents act much like a conveyor belt transport transporting warm water and precipitation from the equator toward the poles and cold water from the poles back to the tropics thus ocean currents regulate global climate helping to counter act the uneven distribution of solar radiation reaching Earth's surface. So, these are the ocean currents. Okay, yung yung um, daloy, no? daloy ng dagat. Okay, it's like a conveyor belt transporting warm water and precipitation from the equator toward the poles and cold water from the poles back to the tropics. So, meaning to say, yung mga um, arrow na yan, it shows the um, ocean currents. If the arrow is red, that brings warm ocean current, or warm water. If the arrow is blue, it brings the colder ocean current or colder um, water. Warm currents that move from the equator towards the pole carry warm water. So warm currents down that move from the equator to towards the pole carry warm water. Example, the ito, the Brazil current. This is a an ocean current in Brazil. From the equator, it moves toward the pole. What kind of water it brings? It brings warm water. On the other hand, cold currents that travels from the poles toward the equator carry cold water. So from the poles, cold currents naman. Example, the Peru. From poles, the Peru current, that is a cold current because it's blue. And it go it it comes from the pole. So since Peru is a cold current, it brings cold water. When ocean current carries cold water, the air above it becomes colder. For example, the Peru current. So this is a cold ocean current. It brings cold water. When this ocean current moves toward the coastal region. The temperature of that area becomes low. So once that um, ocean current, like Peru current, that brings cold water, moves on the coastal area. For example, here, what what what's the tendency? That area experiences colder temperature. So that's how the the effect, or that's the effect of the flow of ocean current that brings cold water once it moves or flows on a coastal area. So example, the Peru current, once it moves here, that area experiences colder temperature or colder climate. On the other hand, the ocean current that carries warm water makes the air warmer. When this current goes toward the landmass, the temperature of that place becomes higher. Example, we have the Kuroshio current comes from the crater going to the poles. Since it is a warm ocean current that brings warm water, the tendency 
the air above the ocean current becomes warm. So once it flows on a certain coastal area, like in Japan, coastal area in Japan, no? once it moves or flows on that area, that area experiences warmer climate. Okay, so that's how ocean current or ocean flows of that ocean current um, affects the climate of an area because it brings cold water and warm water and warm air and cool air. So again, these are the factors that affect the climate of an area. Let's have latitude, elevation or altitude, proximity to bodies of water, location relative to mountain ranges or topography, and ocean currents. Again, those pipes are the factors affecting the climate in a natural way. For your activity, number one, for week five, what you're going to do is to activity one, explain why five points each. The direction, now that you have learned different factors affecting climate, let us try to connect it to the experiences that we have in our country. Try to explain the cause of, of the scenario based from the different factors affecting climate. Write your answer on the clean sheets of paper. So we have three scenarios here. What we're going to, to do is to explain why we experience that scenario in the Philippines. Let's have the first scenario. Very hot summer in the Philippines. It's, that's the illustration from the factors affecting climate that we have discussed. Why do you think we experience this very hot summer in the Philippines? Why do we have a climate like this? Our second scenario is cold climate in Tagaytay. Why do we have a climate like this? Why does, cli why, why does Tagaytay experiences colder climate? And the last scenario is devastating rains every year. Why do we experience devastating rains every year? So each scenario is equivalent to 5 points or total points that is 15 points. That's for your activity 1 for week 5. By learning those um, concepts for week 5, let's have a quiz. Read the statement carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Number 1. Long-term patterns or trends of meteorological conditions in a given area refer to its letter A, weather, B, variability, C, forecast, or climbing. Number two, the meteorological conditions in a given place on a given day refer to its letter A, climate, B, weather, C, habitat, D, ecosystem. Number three, a shift of only a few degrees Fahrenheit in the average global temperature will likely result in more frequent and extreme heat waves. Which of the following choices best describes this phenomenon? A. Habitat destruction B. Weather change C. Climate change D. Ozone formation Number 4. The actual temperature on any given day is the blank, while the range of expected values based on location and time of year is the blank. Letter A, climate weather. B, albedo, radiative forcer. C, weather climate. D, prediction weather. Number five, which of the following is not an aspect of climate? 
A. Long-term patterns of wet trends B. Useful for predicting weather C. Timing of seasonal shifts D. A few warmer days here and there Reminder, answer the Activity 1 and quiz of this week 5. Thank you for watching and listening.